Here. Trustee Marquez. Here. Trustee Diaz Locum. Here. Trustee McAvoy. Present. Trustee Lawson. Here. Uh, welcome everybody. It's it's good to see some familiar faces again. Um, we've been emailing and texting, but it's nice to actually see people. <laughs> um, so to everyone, please bear with us as we navigate this new world of virtual public meetings. This is new for us. Um, and it's really nice to see that we have um, a good showing of uh, the public here to join us. Um, so just to the public, you're automatically muted when you join the meeting. And a reminder that um, this meeting is being recorded. Um, the board will continue to hear public comments as per usual. In order to address the board, please fill out the Google Doc, which is linked on the agenda. Um, and I also shortened the link for you, and it's in the chat box. But um, if you need it, it's bit.ly, so B-I-T dot L-Y slash R-C-S-D K-8. And you can access the public comments card and submit that, and we will get you, um, we will get you in here. Uh, Public comments are limited to three minutes per person per topic and translation is available. So let us know if you need it. We have Gonzalo down um, on the screen. If Gonzalo, you want to wave? There he is. Um, if the item you want to speak on is not on the agenda, you'll be called um, to speak during item five, which is oral communication. And at that time, you'll be unmuted. Uh, if when you're, if you're speaking on an item that's on the agenda, you'll be called on the item that's being addressed. The so public comments related to at-home learning and questions about uh, the coronavirus will be heard during discussion item 8.1. If you want to discuss an item that's listed on consent, please let us know right away with a speaker's card before we approve our agenda so that we can move that item to action. Um, and just note that because we are meeting via teleconference, all votes will be by roll call. And with that, we have a special guest leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance. So, let me while I bring that up. Oh no. Shoot, it's not letting me in. I always will wait to let that in. Yeah, so I, I think you at, you press the bottom to share your screen and then you actually have to select which screen you're going to share. So yeah, you've so, got to process. Oops, here we go. Because it's, it's saying that you, there, there you go. Are we in? Dude. There we go. <laughs> My name is Drew. I am in the second grade at Henry Ford School. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. One nation under God, liberty, justice for all. Yay. Very good. That's great. That's great, Janet. Okay, I think, are we back? So thank you, Jude, um, for those in the audience. That is my youngest son, and I think he's actually on right now. So I wanna say great job, Jude, well done. Yeah. Uh, Good job. With that, moving on, um, are there any changes to the agenda? Uh, this is Dennis. I'd like to add staff recognition. Okay. Um, oh, I need to pull up my... After oral communication? Wherever you'd like it. We'll move it after item five. Anything else? Do we have a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Is that Elisa? Yeah. Yes, it's Elisa. Second. Cecilia. Cecilia, second. Um, a roll call vote, please, Eliana. Trustee McBride? Aye. Trustee Marquez? Aye. Trustee Diaz Locum? Aye. Trustee McAvoy? Aye. Trustee Lawson? Aye. 
Okay, um, at this point, I believe we only have one speaker's card and I think it goes under item 8.1. Um, so unless Ellie, you've received anything else. No, I just checked and we didn't receive anything else. Okay. Um, so we will move on to um, the staff recognition. Dennis. Thank you. Um, and I'm sure I speak for everybody. Um, I'd like to thank every employee in the district uh, from the custodians that are deep cleaning our schools to field maintenance, to food service, serving breakfast and lunches, staff in the business office that are paying the bills and getting the payroll out, our wonderful teachers, our wonderful staff, our wonderful vice principals, principals, cabinet members, district staff, and most of all, you, John. Thank you. I know that's on behalf of the whole board. Yes. Thank you. So we are on to um, item six, the bond program consent items. To approve. This is Dennis, so moved. Second, Cecilia. Okay, Cecilia is second. Um, and a roll call vote, please. Trustee McBride. Aye. Trustee Marquez. Aye. Trustee diaz Slocum. Aye. Trustee McAvoy. Aye. Trustee Lawson. Aye. All right, moving on to 7.1, um, which is a bond action item. Do we, I know we have Will here. Yeah, I'm here. Does anyone have any questions about the Taft construction agreement item? Uh, I, this is Dennis. I Are you able to hear Will? Uh, yes, I can, I can hear you guys. Gosh darn it. So Janet, I have um, a question. Okay. And so can you guys hear me? Yeah. You know, I, okay, I couldn't great. hear great. you, but because I have an unstable internet connection, so I'm going to make a phone call. I'm not. I mean, I'm going to call in as well. Will, I, could you just? I'm sorry to ask you repeat what you just said since I didn't hear it. I just said I'm here. Um, does anyone have any questions about the top <laughs> construction agreements? And then uh, I believe Dennis chimed in. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. What's up, Dennis? So um, this was a question for Don. Um, okay. Don and I were trading emails, and I think it's important for Don to talk about how much uh, below budget this is. Absolutely. Right. So after all of the <clears throat> negotiations that we did in the current one, I believe that we're at seven hundred thousand under, uh, which is a. It was really, really big for us for this one because these were the ones that we were waiting for to come in. Mm -hmm. And for this one to come in $700,000 under budget was a, was a great sign. Mm -hmm. That's great. Thank you, Don. No other questions? Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. This is Maria. Yeah. Is there a second? Second, Cecilia. Cecilia, and a roll call vote, please. Trustee McBride. Aye. Trustee Marquez. Aye. Trustee D. Slocum. Aye. Trustee McAvoy. Aye. Trustee Lawson. Aye. Okay, item 8.1, which I think yes. he's here for. So, John, did you want to go ahead and start? Oh, you're muted, John. John. I'm not leading the meeting, so I, I, I have to remember. Um, <laughs> so, so good evening. So before I start and before I have cabinet members um, give a bit of an overview, I want to also um, applaud some people. You know, we've been into this now. This is week three for us. And to get up and running was really um, crucial. And so I really want to applaud Linda who is our assistant superintendent for a pre-K-5 and ELD, our assistant superintendent, Dr. Linda Montes. So a big applause to her and to her staff development team. And also to Wendy Kelly, who's the assistant superintendent for HR and also sixth through eighth grade. Um, big kudos to both of them because without them and their teams, the distant learning wouldn't be where it is right now. So thank you, number one. 
to both of those ladies. And then Kyle, thank you so much for the technology. I mean, to get the technology out and rolling was amazing. And along to get those students who had no devices, along with a hotspot if they needed it for the internet, that was um, a true expert that went with his staff to make sure that, that happened. So kudos to you. Dennis mentioned the um, uh, child nutrition staff. They've been, you know, from the day one serving breakfast, serving lunch as, as the uh, parents come through the line. And we started out with three schools. We now have four schools. It will continue next week also during spring break. Uh, a big shout out to Jorge Quintana for putting up with my, um, uh, how can I put it? Um, <laughs> my outbursts and not wanting this and wanting that and I want it this way and I don't like this and I want this and he put up with me and we did come to a consensus we did come to a consensus over um over the phone and through uh texts and emails and he's always gotten it out on time when I uh wanted it to to Patricia Pelino who's done a great job with special ed and making sure that our special needs students are um getting the support that is needed to Martin Cervantes the District maintenance, my gosh, what he is in charge of right now is unbelievable. Plus, we, all of us in cabinet, put extra, resp extra responsibilities on his plate, and he just marches on through. Um, Priscilla, for keeping the business office going, we all got our paychecks. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Everybody got their paychecks, plus we had uh, two of her staff members at the district office yesterday giving out checks to those people to don't have automatic deposit. Mm -hmm. Don, thank you so much for keeping the construction going. I know it's been kind of a hit and miss now and then, but thank you. Uh, Antonio Perez, thank you for really working diligently with those um, foster youth and also with the homeless to make sure they have what's needed for the distance learning. Edna's done a great job, Carmona, with the, with the preschools. I mean, she put together uh, a learning packet for them, came in, had its she actually um, ran it off, uh, put it in envelopes, and sent it out to parents. So kudos to, to Edna. And a big thank you to uh, uh, Andrea Guerin for getting uh, the information on our website and on my um, communiques that go home about mental health and where you can get additional support if you need it. And big kudos to um, Patti Ortiz. Patti Ortiz has been working tirelessly with the community not only community schools, but the community in general. Uh, at this point in time, um, there are many of our families who are in need of not only, not only food, but finances. And so uh, Pati has all the places where they can go and where they can get assistance. And she moves forward with that, along with um, Second Harvest. She's making sure that have a Second Harvest is uh, available to our families who need it also. So cabinet members have all done an outstanding job so what I'd like to do now is to start off with um, Dr. Montes, who is the assistant superintendent for uh, pre-K through fifth grade curriculum and instruction and also for ELD. So I'd like Linda to give an overview of how we were two weeks ago and to where we are now and what we envision moving. Um, we know we're, we're ready for two weeks after spring break, but we'll start addressing the rest when we come back. So I'll leave it to okay. Linda. Thank you, John. And you're welcome. It's always a pleasure. Um, I think we're very fortunate actually to be where we are, uh, not in this, just the state, but in our district in this area and with you, John, thank you. Tireless. Um, so uh, first of all, I do want to thank the staff development team. Um, they've been amazing and just from the very beginning, just with all their heart, jumped right in and did um, just a, a, a tremendous amount of work to get us to where we are. So what we started with was, first of all, um, to help launch the preparation for that home learning. We initially, the staff development team, created um, kind of very paper and pencil hard copies for the students, honestly, just to get them going because we knew the teachers were just finishing their parent-teacher conferences. And they didn't have the time, so we spent a lot of time uh, preparing those packets for the students, which gave us a little bit of a window to help the teachers through preschool through eighth grade to prepare for this at-home learning experience that we were going to, to embark on. So the staff development team created um, a series of um, a Google deck, I think the slides, that included 
some essential elements for preparing them for this at home um, learning platform, this online learning platform. And so we started with some professional development that was overview for all of the teachers um, that included things like the use of the Google Classroom, um, Google Meet, uh, which is our Google Hangout or our platform for communication with students. Um, looking at an application called Screencastify, which would allow teachers to um, record um, some mini lessons um, and then continue to develop their understanding of some Google Apps and programs that were already online that we were using like Dreambox, Khan Academy. Um, and then, um, so there was, those were kind of required elements. And all of these were not new to the district, which is I think really uh, supported our work and has moved us to where we are now. Because for some, they had uh, already experienced this third grade, definitely middle school and then third grade on up, depending. Um, but in addition, there were some kind of the clever platform, which is how students access their apps and those kinds of things were already in place. So we're very fortunate to be where we were with the tech team that we have and etc. So that supported our work. And so then the teachers were giving given um, these um, mini podcasts basically or videos of how to if they didn't already know how to learn these things to, to learn some of these required elements that were going to be a part of the online platform. And we had a huge response even before I sent it out, the teachers were just waiting, like, okay, tell, what, is, what is it that you need us to do? Because they knew they had to prepare. And so I just also want to thank all the teachers in the district. They're amazing, um, worked so hard. Um, and I had an opportunity to meet with some of them today. Also, I want to share with that a little bit. But um, so then we also offered kind of like tips for teaching remotely and things like that would keep them to, to, to start. Um, and so that's where we launched. And so actually this week is the first week where we had um, I think more third through eighth grade kind of online um, platform. Whereas before we were practicing, kind of pushing out one or two lessons and having small meetings. Um, other teachers though jumped right in and we were, <laughs> were having lessons right away. And so we had a range of where people were. Um, and so now we're able to um, take a step back and look at what we've done and even um, figure out what we're, what we're um, some elements that were challenging and then some elements that were kind of strong practices that we want to share with others. And so all that that I just described, I called the phase one. That's where we are now. Now knowing that this is going to take us, you know, through the rest of the year, we're moving into what is now our phase two. And so in preparation for this phase two, I did meet with um, some grade level team teachers, um, TK through second and third through fifth grade, so lead teachers in our district, um, to just get their feedback and kind of prepare for this phase two, the next step plan. So there were some things that they learned that I am, we're going to incorporate as part of phase two and be kind of recommendations. Um, so some of the tips from the teachers were um, knowing exactly what was most essential content, knowing that we can't replicate the day-to-day -day instruction that we could have. And so what we looked at were the instructional guides, what we call our pacing guides for content areas. And what we noticed is at this time of year, uh, what we were teaching for many of them were what are called supporting clusters or additional clusters or standards, where the priority standards have already been introduced. And so now we're kind of deepening, deepening their understanding, which is really important because we don't necessarily have to teach the new content per se, because students have been exposed to the most essential priority standards. And so I reviewed the um, pacing guides to make sure that was accurate and it's true. So we're, we're fortunate in that. So if we're following the pacing guide, we're right where we need to be. And so now we're going to spend now to the rest of the year um, um, emphasizing what are priority standards. What well, most essential before you leave um, that particular grade level. And I am speaking with the um, third through fifth grade teachers today, they definitely felt that that was essential and more important what they would like to see. Um, they also learned to do, to chunk the lessons. So rather than, for example, to have 30 to a minute to an hour live sessions, mm -hmm. rather having five to eight minutes of pre-recorded sessions that they could, um, would be content that they could uh, prepare for the students. The students would review it at their own pace, their own time, because we also realize that families have different needs at home and are different places. And, and so then having pushing those out through their Google Classroom, a platform that they're using, students watch the video. And then what the teachers have found is that having then small group meetings with students that are again, like eight to 10 minutes long at max, but having meetings with students that are online in this kind of a format using Google Meet, 
um, help support the students who still needed extra um, guidance in some of the projects they were asked to do. Um, having kind of weekly schedules for parents so that they knew what were quote unquote office hours that they could check in with the teachers. Um, those kinds of things are what they've learned and what are, is, we're going to now share out with the rest of the faculty um, if they don't already have those kinds of things in place. Um, so that's where we are phase two. And then obviously phase three is when we re-enter school again, what that's going to look like. And in that, we'll look at the content that were those additional clusters or supporting clusters that students aren't going to be receiving because it's impossible to do everything that we need to do. But those would be kind of phase three re-entry, kind of um, picking that up right away when we come back, whenever that is, um, so that then the students aren't missing out right, and on this essential content. Um, and so I will say that um, we're all been learning. The teachers were amazing today. Um, some of them had cried knowing that they weren't going to come back. And they said when they met with their teacher, with the students, some of them had little, um, were sending them little sad emoji and crying emoji faces on their um, platform. So I know that it's affecting a lot of you know, people in different ways. And um, one of the things that they learned also is having small uh, meetings with students, with uh, meetings with small groups of students on, again, on Google Meet, where they can just check in with students that doesn't have to be about content, but rather just how are you? How are you? What's it like being at home you know, with your family? What are you doing? Um, those opportunities to check in are equally important to remember that you know, everybody's going through a um, challenging time and to remember that aspect of a student's learning. Um, so I believe that's where we are now. Um, and I'm, I'm thankful for everybody jumping right in. The teachers have been amazing, truly gifted teachers, and, um, and the staff development team, I want to say thank you so much. So I don't know if there's any questions. Yeah, are there any questions for Linda? Then if there are no questions, we'll go on to uh, Wendy thank Kelly, you. who's the Assistant Superintendent for uh, HR in sixth through eighth grade. Wendy, we can't hear you. Can't hear you. No, now you're, you're muted. Wrong, you're muted. But we couldn't hear you when you weren't either. Huh. Turn the volume up. <laughs> the volume? No. <laughs> and it says Wendy is unmuted. It does. Yeah, it says on our on on yeah. That is odd. <laughs> oh my gosh, we're gonna miss that then. Um, so Wendy, if you can hear me, if you go up to the Apple menu and see if you can look and um, activate the microphone. You While we're doing it. this, I just wanna to say to the audience, I've seen a couple of questions popping up and hands raised. If you would like to address the board, please fill out a speaker's card. Um, the address for that is bit.ly slash rcsdk8, and you'll be called on. Uh, we'll do speaker's cards after we get some information from um, the staff. How is it now? No. Wendy, can you call in with your cell phone and be able to speak to us that way? That would be, yeah, that's yeah, sure. yeah and it's on, the, it's on the agenda, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, no, the K does not need to be lowercase, although I think it is in the link. Okay, we'll wait a few moments. Um, that to occur. All right, is that a number? Yes. Can you hear me? This is Elisa. Yep. Yeah. Okay, great. I moved to a phone. Um, maybe I'll just ask a question since we're waiting for Wendy. Wendy, are you there yet? No, no. 
Okay, I was going to wait till Wendy was done, but let me just go ahead and ask my question. I, um, Linda, thank you very much for the update. That was really good to hear, and I know how hard the staff development team worked to prep everything, so thank you for acknowledging them. And just everything the teachers are doing, I've been hearing from some of them and some of the parents, and I mean, it's really, truly remarkable. Um, one one thing that I have heard, and I've is that Wendy? No. Um, one thing I've heard is in addition to connecting with the teacher, and so I was glad to hear about the small group chat and some of the check-ins that are happening there. What opportunities are there for students to kind of check in with one another? And I suppose that can happen in the small group, but if you could maybe speak to a little bit of that and if some teachers are finding better ways to do that than others. I, I think part of it, and you alluded to this in your comment, is what I'm hearing a lot of is, you know, there's the academic piece, but then there's just that connection piece, that emotional social piece. So I don't know if you could say a little bit more about that. Um, I'd be interested to hear just what the teachers are saying or what, what you guys are thinking about to have, how to further enhance that as we move forward in phase two at, for a longer period of time. Right. So we do want opportunities for students to collaborate. Uh, right now, part of the phase one was making sure that students, first of all, had connection in their Chromebooks, et cetera. So we are in that place now. Um, we found that having unsupervised chat rooms probably isn't um, ideal. Mm -hmm. So it's a little different, definitely for primary and, and for middle school too, right? It is, that's part of the issue. So um, um, definitely having supervised kind of opportunities for students to just see each other, like how we are now, helped the students. And that's what the teachers uh, found where the topic really wasn't about a content related, but rather just a question that they asked about how they were feeling. And so that right now has been um, successful for those who tried that. Um, and then they were trying to find different ways for students to collaborate, like if they were going to add information to a Google slide where they were doing group projects. But again, there's no way to necessarily supervise that once they're out on, the, um, mm -hmm. on their own platform. So it works a little different. And so, that was some one of the things that the third through fifth grade teachers brought up today of different ways that they can have um, students not just participating in a question answer session because that's what they can do in a small group session um, but opportunities to um, to collaborate right to interact because the social part is such a big part of learning um, so it is something that we need to work on at least i don't have a strong answer for that one right now okay yeah, I, you know, it's also new and I um, have told a few parents that have been sending emails that, you know, some of us are on these daily calls with the county and school board members and everybody is sort of struggling with a lot of these same sorts of things and it's also new for us and, you know, certainly as we learn best practices, we can roll those out. Um, so, you know, we are not alone in this and it's not easy and we're just doing the best we can and and I'm sure we'll come up with better and better practices as we continue, right? Yes, um, and I, I think the thing too is to remember, you know, the teachers are learning so many different platforms and, and elements. So I know that once we um, feel like we're stronger in this phase one, but definitely the next part is to uh, enhance what we're doing. And so def definitely, I think that that's just part of what we're learning and experiencing. And teachers are awesome. They're just going online and, and also finding things that work for them. And of course we have Kyle yeah. who's super supportive and knows um, a lot of the different um, tools that we should be using as our tech team in our own teachers. So it's been great. Yeah, no, I'm super impressed so far. You're doing a good job. Okay, thanks. I have Wendy on the phone. So she's able Yay. to share help, okay? She's actually in the list as an attendee right now. Okay, Wendy. Okay, so hopefully you can hear me. Yes. Okay, let me let me okay. let me hang up. Okay. Okay, great. So, hi everyone. Sorry for the difficulties. Um, hold on, I'm gonna check my computer. So, I did want to speak to you tonight, and you know, reiterate like I mentioned a few things that Linda had mentioned. I have to say that when the news came forth with um, the fact that we would need to depart schools and, and close schools, the amount of energy and dedication from all staff, from our librarians to our office staff, to our instructional assistants who were out there on the front lines getting all of the packets out and the devices and so forth was remarkable. 
um, of course, our principals leading the charge. And then also, um, the, um, the, the our, in my case, the 6-8 staff development team, who I worked very closely with, just was all hands on deck. It was just the most amazing community piece and um, this this desire to get everybody what they needed in such a short turnaround. I, I called it a 48-hour turnaround for weeks of work um, that was relevant and interesting to students. And really, we, you know, the 6-8 team, uh, staff development team, we looked at it like a warm-up for what was to come um, to get students what they needed right away. And since then, um, I do have to say the sixth or eighth grade teachers, um, as a generality in Redwood City, have been using Google Classroom. And we were really lead, the, the two schools leading the charge has been, of course, Kennedy and MIT because they have the one to one devices. So we were able to learn from those teachers about how we could get this up and running pretty quickly. So, of course, all of the resources that, that Linda mentioned were available to teachers, Google Classroom, various online platforms. And giving teachers the two weeks of time and space to process what their next job would be was really critical for us. Um, so I'm going to speak a little bit more about the, the credential teachers, and then I'll move to the classified staff for a bit. Um, but anyway, getting back to the teachers, you know, it's been really interesting um, in talking to them and talking to the staff development team because there are two components that we're addressing. One is the socialization factor within all grade levels, but certainly in middle school of, of, of the loss of social interactions and kids talking about how they miss their friends and miss the classroom experiences. It really honors what the teachers do every day in general. Um, but, but how teachers then will take that um, piece of it and make sure they're nurturing it moving forward as best as they can, coupled with now how are we gonna tackle the new and most recent information about um, at-home learning onward. So similar to Linda, what we did is look at the major concepts that need to be taught between now and June, between March and June really, and figuring out what was most imperative for students to be tackling because we do need our, our students, especially in eighth grade, to have similar experiences to their peers that will be feeding into Sequoia. Union High School District, and yet making it very doable for families. So we're constantly bridging that. We recognize in our district that we have different socioeconomic levels and different capabilities of parents to assist and so forth, or to at least offer supports. And so trying to determine right now what will be the best course of action while offering as much flexibility to teachers as we possibly can as they're learning and experiencing this as well. I've been so impressed with the teachers, how aware they are of their student needs. They're very concerned when a student doesn't show up for one of the Google Hangouts or meetings that they have, and um, they've developed a great communication system to the principal about how to get support for those families or at least check in. So anyway, I'm looking forward to what's to come in the sense that we're gonna rise to the occasion in ed services, we always do. I feel blessed that we have a staff development team. You know, I talk to my peers in other districts and they're just really struggling with giving extra workloads to their teachers because they don't have this uh, staff development team. And so it was amazing um, to have everyone grouped together. We've also met with lead teachers as well, as Linda mentioned um, in the 6-8 and received feedback. Those folks are also assisting and being points of contact to their peers and we'll be moving into content area cluster meetings with teachers to help give support as well as we when we get back to spring break so anyway the two areas um the socialization pieces and the um the academic pieces and then just looking ahead you know some of the milestones in the spring the parties the promotions you know all these things are on people's minds and we're good we're we're great listeners and we're trying to problem solve so that kids still have a great memory of their time in the spring in Redwood City. So that's what's happening with uh, credentialed staff. Um, with classified staff, I just want to, you know, say a few things about that. Um, I've been just amazed at the willingness and ability for our classified staff to jump in and work. I know we're all considered essential employees in the school district. And so, 
it's been really interesting um, for certificated teachers, but then also classified staff to to see their peers working at home while others are working at sites. And we've come up with a fair rotation and working with the union on how that will will transpire for truly essential groups. And those groups are considered those that work on maintenance around the district. That's in, important, similar to like public works departments and cities. Um, of course, the construction piece that we brought up earlier, the distance learning and supporting of distance learning. So our technology technicians have been really there to deploy and assist. Our food service, of course, is just amazing work every day, literally every day, getting food out, including spring break, which is such a blessing. We've been thankful that Sequoia Union High School District has offered food service as well, but they will be scaling back. They did scale back, I should say, this week. So uh, we were out in, in full force uh, assisting our families. And really, you know, I've been working with, uh, switching over to HR a little bit, working with the unions and trying to develop um, a fair MOU. I have to say both contracts are pretty solid, mainly because right now, aside from those groups that were mentioned in the order from the public health department, those over 60 and those with various health conditions, everyone is still being paid and everybody um, is, you know, expected to be working, assuming they can, you know, they're healthy and so forth. And so, um, you know, these ongoing changes that keep happening every day or every other day or once a week and being able to be flexible to work within the scope that we're given I appreciate the relationships that have been built in Redwood City with the unions and um, those that are struggling with some of the decisions that I'm struggling with every day and trying to make this an equitable process. So it's been hard. I'm not going to lie. There's the, the change happened suddenly and we're reacting by it and it's still not over. But I do appreciate the constant conversations that we have and the consistent conversations to help us get through and problem solve some of our upcoming, you know, struggles that, that we're facing as well. So that is it for 6-8 Ed Services and for HR. Are there any questions? I guess not. So thank you, Wendy. That's great. So Kyle, would you give an update at this point in time regarding tech? Kyle's on mute. Yeah, I just had to unmute myself. I didn't want everybody to hear the motorcycle speeding by my home. Um, so, so we worked really hard in technology services to make sure that all of the students and all of the staff had all of the materials they needed to be successful in at-home learning. So as of the present day, we've issued 1,566 Chromebooks out to our students and we've issued 406 hotspots that were provided to us from CZI. We still have some of the hotspots left, but we- Sorry, can you give me those numbers again? 1,566 Chromebooks and 406 hotspots. And we are gonna continue tomorrow. We did our first day of issuing Chromebooks to second graders today. We will finish up with issuing Chromebooks to second graders tomorrow. So we're looking at at least another 100 Chromebooks going out and probably another 75 hotspots going out. Um, we are also getting requests from students who missed the first couple of rounds of uh, Chromebook and hotspot deployments um, <laughs> needing devices. And so what we've done is we've set up a series of um, basic of Google Forms that people can fill out. And if they can't get access to the form, we're letting them know they can call the main district office line and leave a message. And Merced Ruiz, who is our uh, receptionist, is picking up those messages three times a day and putting those requests into a spreadsheet. And our technicians are now providing either tech support or scheduling appointments for people to come in and either exchange a device, get a device, or, um, trying to troubleshoot over the phone some of the issues that students and teachers might be having with their devices. So we're trying to keep everybody going. We know it's tough to do it from, from a distance, but we're really working hard to make sure by 
having those appointments that we maintain social distancing um, and we are making sure that our techs are gloved and masked the whole time. And anytime that we bring in a device that's been out in the field, we have alcohol, we're immediately dis uh, sanitizing it so that we kind of keep, we keep our staff safe as well. Are there any questions for Kyle? Kyle, is there? Sorry. Um, I have a question. Did someone else have a question? Go ahead, Elisa. Yeah. Dennis, those Okay, two. thanks. Sorry, it, it, this is breaking up a little bit, so I'm sorry if I'm <laughs> jumping in here. Um, so on the Chromebooks, I was just curious, Kyle, how are we doing on the numbers that we have and the ability to get them out? Uh, thanks for the updates. That's really remarkable if you think about it in a couple of weeks, how many Chromebooks and hotspots you got out. Um, good job, you guys. Uh, so I'm just, I, I, you know, I think we were at kind of a one-to-one, -one, so my guess is we have enough to lend out, but I just wanted to double check on that if we have enough of the Chromebook. And then two on the hotspot, how are we doing on that? And I know we are, we were offered a recent donation to help with purchasing more of those. So if we need to, we can do that. Mm -hmm. um, so just if you could just say a little bit more about kind of supply and how that looks, any so, issues around internet access. Right. So we've, um, we think we have enough Chromebooks and you're correct in saying that before we started this process, we were one to one with Chromebooks for all students in grades three through eight. And we were one device for every two students in grades K2. That could be a combination of Chromebooks and or iPads. Um, so we're going to be fine on the number of Chromebooks that we have. The hotspots we are starting to run low on in and the, and the donation um, that you mentioned will, will help us um, get more of those and be able to provide those out to students. I also need to um, kind of give kudos to my staff because none of this is possible without them. Um, Carlos Reyna, who Dennis McBride says, everybody knows that guy in the district, right? Um, it just does a tremendous job. Roger Lim has been um, fielding all of our calls um, at home from his home and doing tech support for teachers and doing a remoting into staff devices to provide them tech support. Um, all six of our technicians, our data services team has been working, um, resetting passwords and providing that kind of support. Um, so I, I'm really fortunate to have a really great staff that I work with. So I want to make sure I added that as well. Um, and I, I, I think we're going to be okay. The hotspots, you know, I know we're going to run low and I know we have some resources to replenish those, but I think we're going to be able to keep moving the way we are. And I don't think we'll have any shortages between now and the end of the year. Okay. Um, thank you. And, you know, just for the board and for the staff, um, so, you know, one of our former, well, actually two of our former students who uh, were in with us uh, third grade through eighth grade, reached out to me. They're now, one's now in college and one's working. They reached out and said they wanted to make a donation to help with internet access for our hmm. students. And so that's the donation that we're talking about and that'll be coming in shortly. Um, and so Priscilla and Kyle have been in on the loop with that. So that was really nice, people reaching out. And then the other thing is um, today on the county call, um, the county manager mentioned, or somebody mentioned, I think it was the county manager, mentioned that Google is going to provide 100,000 points of access in San Mateo County, uh, free for three months, uh, internet service. And so we should definitely, I don't know who the contact is, but I will try to find out if they haven't already reached out to you, uh, that we should try to get in on some of that as well for some of our families or staff, if it, if it seems appropriate. So Lisa, that um, Governor, Newsom, Governor Newsom on his um, conference this afternoon mentioned those 100,000 hotspots. Oh, maybe it was, sorry. Was you know what, that's right. It was Newsom for the state. That's, that's what I was thinking, 100,000 for San Mateo County, that's a lot. You're right, no. I'm sorry, I've been on so many calls. It was Newsom. It was, it was the people that are responsible for that are Google, and then Google is giving thousands of Chromebooks to school districts. So there'll be details coming out on how we can access okay. that also. Great, great. I just wanted to make sure that if that was available that we tap into that. So good. Okay, thanks. Go ahead, Dennis. Um, first, uh, thank you, Kyle, and thank, your team. thank you to your team. It's, it's just amazing to think what you've done 
Um, this may be premature for you to answer, but we're starting to get emails where parents are saying that they really like Zoom and they really aren't quite as happy with what we're doing now. Could you talk to why we switched and where we're going? And if it's premature, just say it's premature. No, we can have a larger discussion about it later, but I mean, the, it, we, we haven't changed. I mean, we stay, we've started with Google Meet, we've been with Google Meet the entire time. Um, and really, we started with Google Meet because it is part of the Google App Suite. We already have parents sign an acknowledgement that we're going to use those tools at the beginning of the year. And so when this all came about, we felt it was a little difficult for us to now go out and ask parents to sign another release for another application when we had a tool that we could use that was already part of our suite and we wouldn't have to do that. So that was the, the primary motivation for us to move forward. Since that time, um, there's been a variety of different things and both Google Meet and Zoom have made improvements over the last week to try to um, bolster up some of the deficiencies each platform has had. Um, but I also want to kind of make notice is that one of the things that we get with Google Meet that you can't get with Zoom regardless of the version is that we can see every single conference in the back end. So in the management console, of our um, Google App Suite, we can see every single conference that's held. We, if they're in progress as the super administrator of our domain, I can jump right into any one of them. And so I can see what's going on. We don't have that vision with Zoom. And so it was, it was thought that that was a better platform for us. The other piece is that it's already tied into Google Classroom, which Dr. Montes had talked about earlier, that all of our third through eighth grade teachers are now required to have a Google Classroom to um, work with their classes. And so just because of all of those different things, it was much easier for us to support one platform versus two and something that we already had authorization from the parents to use. So um, if it's not too much work, could I make a suggestion that we push something out to the parents explaining what we're doing and why we're doing it. Because I know um, people are having one-off conversations. I think there's a lot of misinformation out there. I, I can absolutely do that, Dennis. And so I will prep that and, and run it by John and um, the cabinet over the next couple of days. Okay, thank you. Yeah, Dennis, I'm really happy you brought that up. Thank you, because I know we've been getting emails. Because I think it's important for you know us to understand, for parents, staff to understand that there are certain platforms that we can support well, and exactly what you just said, Google um, platform is one that we can support well, and that the issue with having a bunch of different platforms that you're supporting is we have a limited amount of staff to do that, right? Um, in addition, I know some of the safety concerns that we've heard about with Zoom um, from other school districts that we're trying to prevent happening here. Now, if Zoom gets it together, you know, and there aren't those issues, then you know, maybe if some teachers are comfortable using it, that might be a different thing. But but the issue is we have to be comfortable using it as a district, right, and comfortable supporting it. Um, and I think you made up some good points that, you know, we already have signatures from parents for Google Meet, and that if you're going to start using another platform, you're probably going to need to get signatures for the others. I don't, I don't know. You guys would know better on the legal side of things. Yeah, we would, we would have to have at least an acknowledgement. So, um, we have parents acknowledge that their students are going to be using Google Apps as part of the back to school packet that they do at the beginning of each school year. So they acknowledge that their students are going to use those tools. Anything that's above that, that's not connected into the Google Apps suite, we would have to get a separate um, acknowledgement from the parents that we're going to be using those tools. Maria or Cecilia, did you have any questions or comments at this point? Um, Janet, yeah. I just wanted to say thank you to everybody also. I'm really happy to see how fast the um, equipment was deployed. And I think special thanks go to Dr. Baker for, as usual, being able to get the resources that our students needed. Um, I think everyone has already said thanks to everybody. And I'm glad to hear that um, everything's going well so far. I mean, like everything, there's always a few bumps in the road, but overall, I think it's uh, 
we're ahead of a lot of places. So mm -hmm. thank you very much. The same with me. I like to just thank everybody in general for all the great job everyone has done. And again, we know it's been hard, but at the same time, I think it's has been going well. And like Maria said, um, we are better than other places. So it goes to everyone. So Kyle, I just wanted to ask if, um, so first of all, thank you. I know you've been working way over time, just like everybody else in the district is right now. Um, you've been putting in a lot of work to get us up and going. Um, is there a plan yet for how your team is going to be collecting those devices at the end of the school year? You're on mute. Yeah, so I'm on mute. Yeah, we don't have a plan as of yet because we thought we were coming back. Um, sure. So so that's actually one of the things because I also supervise the librarians. I also have to put the plan in place to pull, bring back in all the library books at the end of the year as well. So. Um, so our goal is um, we will probably just re start with reversing the process that we did to deploy. So we did the first two rounds of deployment at the school sites and then everything after the first two rounds we did at the district office so that we had a central place um, and that we then uh, staggered the times, which is what we're doing with the second graders right now. Um, today we did um, Adelante and um, Garfield in the morning and we did uh, Roosevelt and Ford in the afternoon and then tomorrow we have other schools going in the morning and the afternoon so that we can um, maintain that distancing but as we pick them up I think we will have certain drop-off times at different locations so that we can make it easier for people to drop off um, devices. Um, it is going to be a huge task to bring all these devices back in and make sure they get to the same to the right site um, we have documented that very well that we know which Chromebook came from which site and that we can get it back to the right site um, and so we will probably do something where we collect at sites first and then after we've collected the sites for um, a certain period of time we'll collect in at the district office or a central location to get the rest of them thank you um, Dr. Baker, did you have more staff that you wanted to have speak? We, we do have some speakers cards. So. Um, I, I do have some more staff that, have, that I would like to speak. Would okay. like, I would like to have them speak so you can get a true update of what we're doing for this period of time. So um, Dr. Polino, uh, the director of special ed, if I could have her just give um, an overview of what has taken place so far, that would be great. And then after Dr. Polino, we will have um, Antonio Perez, and we'll go on from there. There's still a few people. There's like four more. Unmute yourself. <laughs> okay, now. <laughs> um, good evening, everyone, and thank you for everything. We couldn't do anything without all the people that has been involved, technology, educational services, everybody. It's been just amazing, the support system that have been created to support the children. So special ed, there is a lot going on, so I'm gonna just review this um, with you all and open to questions, but I wanna acknowledge my staff, my staff. Um, we, um, in five hours, distributed uh, 1,300 letters explaining what was happening um, with the support of legal counsel. Prior written notice were sent to all the families in Redwood City of those children who have IEPs. And that could not happen without my amazing staff, Maggie, Kim, Beto, Leilani. They're all just amazing, my, my program specialists. But a special acknowledgement to my entire special education team, 206 people working for the children. And they have been very inspiring and very uh, much uh, concerned also on how to best support the kids. So um, uh, lots of phone calls uh, from and to parents are happening. We have our phones available, our emails. We're receiving a lot of emails and a lot of phone calls with questions and comments and and some support needed. I, I also want to appreciate the parents that have been so, so understanding as to 
this is very new to us and us the staff has embarked in a completely new way of teaching and for kids to learn the parents have been number one supporters of the staff and their children so i want to acknowledge that the parents are also part of this team and thank you for for being so wonderful um i also wanted to tell you that we're doing Google Classrooms. I was part of one eighth grade SDC Google class this morning, and I was saying hello to the kids. The teacher had 10 kids on that Google Classroom, and he has 11 kids, so only one missing. And the aides were working with the teacher and the therapist at that moment. So the aides have been also fundamental in the work we're doing. They're also providing bilingual support. We're doing Google Hangouts. And this morning I participated in Mary, class, Mary Can class at Hoover. And the kids were in the garden, in their houses, in their porches, in their living rooms with the parents. And she was doing a sign language class. And the aide was at the same time um, translating. It was so amazing what I was uh, being part of. And, and the parents were there with the kids. And remember that Mary has the most fragile kids in our district. And yet these kids get Google Hangout every day at 11 a.m. if you wanna join. Um, we're also providing professional development and meeting with my staff once a week with every single group, including instructional assistants. And I'm happy to say that last Friday, I had 67 eight joining our, our training, our meeting. I was so um, excited about that. Speech and language therapists are working. Yesterday, we prepped 87 packets and today we're delivered, Maggie, Thank you. She delivered uh, the package to UPS um, and we were able to, and we're doing social distancing. So one day I was at the district office, another day, another person. And that's how we've been doing it. Mental health support is also provided. We're working closely with our mental health providers to make sure that they're checking weekly, if not daily on the kids. Um, the teachers are creating in their living rooms, they're creating classrooms. So for example, Laura Atherton, preschool teacher, she, um, it, it, she showed us how she was transforming her living room into a classroom. And that was pretty awesome. We also have teachers who, uh, um, especially preschool, um, who have asked permission to go and retrieve um, materials because as you know preschool is hand over hand learning so it's very difficult to engage them into online so we've been working closely but I know the preschool teachers have been not only preschool all the teachers have been communicating with the parents and they're keeping communication logs weekly um, I also want to say that um, as we are conducting our meetings, we're also sharing resources and I'm part of all the weekly SELPA meetings and we're also working closely with our legal counsel because as you know, special ed brings another layer of responsibility and accountability. So we're also, also very vigilant as to what the state and the federal government is, is dictating and we're keep, keeping our superintendent and cabinet um, informed. Um, I, I, I can keep going, going for two hours, but I do want to say that I'm extremely proud of the staff and the kids who are engaging. It's not perfect. It won't be. We're still learning how to do this, but what is really wonderful, and, and, and kudos to the principals, the side principals have been amazing, and, and also supporting special ed. Um, I also want to add that those Chromebooks were also delivered to every single uh, child in grades third through eight, including special ed. Um, and we're working as to, okay, one, what are the next steps to engage them into more comprehensive learning? Now that we know uh, we will extend up home learning, but if we're open, special ed is open to question, phone calls, to everything. We're actively engaged in our community. And we want to thank you and acknowledge our superintendent. He has been a rock star in this process. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Patrice.
Patricia. Any questions for Patricia? It's a lot of work. A lot of work. Okay, yes. Senor Perez, unmute. Thank you. Thank can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. So, um, so yeah. again, thank you to the staff who has been supporting the student services department. Um, Kathy Ibarra, who is supporting me with the homeless and poster youth. Um, and then uh, Gina Castaneda, who's supporting me with the migrant ed students. And um, I'm working um, hand to hand with Linda Montes, supporting the newcomer students, and her staff is really helping us a lot. So, what we're doing is reaching out to the families, um, asking them if they were able to, number one, collect two weeks ago, collect the packets that were sent out to the students. And if not, you know, giving the information on how to, you know, make up these packets, how to connect um, with the school or the district to get those packets or Chromebooks or hotspots. Um, and then uh, we also are following up with conversations, with, with phone calls about um, the resources that are available in the community. Patty Ortiz developed, um, she will talk about it later, but she developed um, a very strong um, services for our community, but we're providing that information to to the um, families. Um, when our, the staff is connecting to the um, to the families, there's uh, always a um, a follow up conversation, or many times a follow up conversation about resources that they're lacking of, and then um, based on the notes that I received, I follow up with a uh, phone call conversation. There's also families with, with phone numbers that are either disconnected or no longer in service. And then, you know, I call back later and then it, find, it turns out that the families were not able to pay the bill to, to continue with the service. So um, they appreciate that we continue to phone call them after we don't get a response from some of the families. Um, I am getting emails from uh, teachers asking for support. I'm concerned about a student A, B, or C. It's not connecting or not responding or not re um, either to an email or to a phone call. So we link those um, families either by me calling or asking either Michelle Ramond or um, Kathy to follow up with the families. Um, I don't want to expand, you know, talk more, but I just want to let you know that there are some emotional pieces that are happening and we're trying to listen to the families and we have a, um, an, a, a protocol where we try to understand the current situation, trying to calm down the families so they feel heard and at the same time encouraged to, you know, through this uh, difficult um, moment because they're concerned about, you know, truck, um, um, jobs they are concerned about um, uh, paying for rent or food and all those services. They are very uh, fortunate to be part of our district. They always mention, thank you for all the services that are provided to us. Um, so that's my update. Thank you, Antonio. Um, Patti Ortiz. And Hi, everyone. Um, Good evening in these weird times, but um, just echoing Antonio, I'm gonna keep it short. Um, we have been working very closely with the other departments too. Um, I mean, everyone's been incredible giving us resources that we can use or check in with partners about. Um, so we are in the process of uh, figuring out uh, what, what will this look long term? I think echoing Antonio's last comment about family stress and you know our staff feeling a lot of that stress as they check in with families about the long term economic effects has been one of the biggest things that comes up. We're helping navigate with amazing resources in the community that I have to say the whole community stepped up like big funders in the Bay Area really stepped up in supporting with either technology, rent, food, 
at, services have increased in our community currently. But you know, now that it's gonna be closed so many months, we, we do worry about what that will create in terms of stability and then obviously the repercussions that it has on long-term learning and child development. But we, we work with uh, student services, with um, you know, the fact that we have other groups calling newcomers, homeless, foster, has helped us know what um, caseloads or roster, so to speak, to prioritize as we're calling them and, and checking in with them. We're keeping all our partners um, informed. Uh, many of them are continuing services through demo, uh, remote learning and distance, be that mentors, counselors, tutors. So we've been supporting the back and forth, getting verbal consents from families, then getting the partner of the caseload, contact information, et cetera, and checking in daily or weekly with them. We work with the city very closely, different departments and the community, uh, the Fair Oaks Community Center and all the um, um, current supports and system navigation there exists. Um, we got trained in unemployment applications and rent assistance applications to support families do that from home and do it fast. Um, we know the county is gonna put out more services um, and supports um, with the county fund that's gonna come out for small business owners, individuals, et cetera. Um, and right now we're just trying to figure out how to coordinate. We, we do worry, I think a um, couple mentioned it before, Patricia and Antonio, about kind of child welfare, you know, mental health for the family. These are very stressful times to be cooped in. Our families don't live in ideal living conditions and that heightens everything. So we're also trying to figure out how to do that now that the teachers will also be calling with the Google Voices, how to make sure that all kids are accounted for on a weekly basis, even if, even if they're not in any of our caseloads, not Antonio's, not Linda's, not mine, not Pati Pelino's, um, and making sure everyone's safe. But things are going well for now, because um, right now everyone has stepped up. There's a lot of resources out there, but I agree, I think there's a lot of um, anxiety and stress, and we're gonna help navigate that as much as we can. All right. Thank you, Pati. Any questions for Pati? Uh, Priscilla. Uh, I, uh, oh, go ahead. Oh, Is there a question? I, I just want to say to both Antonio and um, Pati, thank you so much. I mean, this is a group of kids that I know we all really worry about and want to do well. And I think it's going to be hardest on the group of kids and families that you just talked about, both of you. And so as we move forward, you know, please let the board know um, how we can continue to support. Um, I think, you know, the equity issue we're all concerned about and it's only going to become a bigger issue and just the safety and welfare of these families. Um, so thank you for all you're doing. I know you do it with heart and soul and passion and um, truly uh, grateful. Uh, and then I also wanted just to put in a plug for the Redwood City Education Foundation because, of course, they did the, the big fundraising drive that raised, I think, over $200,000. I don't know where they're at now. And a lot of that money is being used for these families. So just to shout out to the organization. And um, Pat, you mentioned, you know, the big, or one of you mentioned the big donors and everything that are coming in. So I think, you know, we may have to go back and call on them for more as this extends out. So just, you know, let's have good communication around that. And please let us know how we can support you. Yes, thank you, Lisa. I totally forgot to mention Jason and RCF. The whole team there was phenomenal and 100% of the money, they're not even going to take overhead, is going to families. Um, 150k in the form of rent assistance through the Fair Oaks Community Center and 50k I actually have already part of it at my home in the form of gift cards for daily <laughs> expenditures, you know, groceries, um, personal hygiene products, etc. And this is phenomenal. And over 50K of those were raised from just our community school funders, which is amazing that above everything they give all year, they still stepped up for the RCF fundraiser. So um, RCF has been an amazing partner throughout this. So I have a question because um, I recently heard about a family, one of our, one of our families that um, was running out of diapers and formula. And I don't know if they're connected with you already, but how, if they're not, how would we go about getting them connected? So send me their name. And it was my mistake to not send the board as well, the resource um, directory that we put together that it's a Google doc because it needs to be live because things change daily, but we have either rent, personal necessity, legal, food, everything that's there. But always anyone that reaches out, you can send me their name and I'll call them back. But I will copy the board on that Google doc so you guys have it too. Thank you. Great. 
And oh, you know, one other thing, I'm sorry, I wanted to mention, I heard on the county call today, Sam Sita went over parts of their website and I'll send um, Patti and Antonio, well, actually I'll send it to everybody, the link if you didn't see it. They actually have on their website jobs that are currently available because as we know, as we're shifting, there are actually some jobs, a lot of people are losing their jobs, but there are some jobs that are available, like more in the delivery service, food industry, some, you know. So I'll send you that because I was looking through the list and some of our families that might, they might be jobs that they may be able to apply for. Yes, please send me anything you find and we'll keep adding it to the directory. Okay, um, great. I'll send that to you. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Priscilla. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Um, so on the business and finance side, there's just so much apprehension and, you know, and nervousness about what the impact of this um, COVID situation is to the school district budget. But as in a crisis situation, we are in communication with each other. We are communicating with the County Office of Education and with the other CBOs in the school districts. And so the common question would be, what would be the impact of these to the funding for, uh, for K-14? And also, are there additional funds that the school district will be getting? So uh, as far as additional funds, there's nothing certain except for the SB 117 or the um, uh, LEA COVID-19 response fund, which is about 124,000 for Redwood City School District. This fund we will already be getting by the end of the week, I guess, or maybe early next week. And that is, um, that is, for nutrition services and cleaning and disinfecting and supplies, but this is really intended for uh, ensuring health and safety of students. So um, other than that, there is no other additional funding source that we know, except that there's a discussion about being able to reimburse some of the expenditures through FEMA so we're uh, looking into that. I am um, going to research on that. I know there's a deadline to submit an application, but it's very strict also on what can be reimbursed because they're serving not only school district, but all um, agencies. And they're not going to fully fund the, the, the claims for reimbursements. It's usually about 75% of the claim. And then um, the reimbursement through FEMA would take a long time. It could be months or it could be several years because, because you get, before you get your funding. So uh, for Redwood City, the kind of a saving grace for us is um, having transitioned to a basic aid district. So the impact may not be as quick as a non-basic aid district because it would take about 12 to 18 months before there is a um, reassessment of property values and a decline in property tax revenues. So as far as what I've learned um, with the uh, controller's office, what, we have, what they have estimated for 1920 in terms of property taxes is holding. And so we are basic aid in 1920 and we uh, anticipate that we will be also in 2021 because of the time span for the reassessment of properties. But 2021, 22 would be very uncertain for us it, because the, the decline in property taxes might hit by then. We know that many businesses in the area are now going to apply for a reassessment of their properties and I, we don't know how quickly they would be able to act on that but we are anticipating that in the long run this would have a significant impact to the basic aid districts. So um, with, with that, you know, we're talking about settlements for uh, negotiation settlements that we should not be engaging in a multi-year settlement at this time because we have to really look at year over year impact to uh, to school districts and um 
as far as the state is concerned, for us in Redwood City, we get about 12.8 million in the state aid and the rest we're gonna get in property taxes. So the property taxes is okay, but the state aid as well, there's a concern about cash flow because they may also be deferring apportionment for that state aid portion of our funding. So, and then for the non-basic aid, there could be an immediate impact because the state could, you know, not fund COLA or, or put a deficit factor in the formula and all of that. So we don't know yet exactly what the impact will be. We are anticipating that details will be provided when we get the May revised um, governor's proposal. And we know that this, it will be significantly different from the January proposal. So although for us, um, Redwood City, although we're basic aid, there are additional grants outside of uh, LCFF that we are getting that we may not get in 2021. So that's something to uh, consider also in, for planning purposes. There was a promise in January that we are going to get additional funding for mental health, that uh, self, uh, the, the, um, the, the AB602 for SALPA, that there will be an adjustment in per pupil funding. We don't know that as of now, whether that would still be funded the state may have may reprioritize all of these one-time grants we are anticipating additional funding for preschool that we may not get in 2021 so there's really so much uncertainty there that we really have to prepare we know that there's a lot of expenditures that may be related to um to COVID-19 and um, that's not in our budget that we have to you know find a source on how we can um, provide funding for these so the SB117 that we got 124,000 is definitely not going to be enough because we don't know how long this will be so um, the planning for 2021 was definitely be different from what we have presented at second interim. So um, this is just something that we um, have to be ready for. Um, I think that is it that I have for now, but the, as far as the business office staff, like all the other departments, they're also very cooperative. They are even willing to come, you know, not thinking of the risk, but really looking at the common goods. I really, really feel blessed also that I have my staff working really supportively and cooperatively with everyone. Do you have any question? Thank you, Priscilla. Thank um, you. I, well, I, I'm sorry, I did. Um, so you mentioned that the direction is not to do multi-year contracts. Correct. And so that brings up point with where we're at. I know that we've been negotiating with the Redwood City uh, Teachers Union. I mean, we've been negotiating with everybody, but we were further along with them. I don't know if we have a final multi-year contract that we've all agreed on or not, and so could you speak to that? I think they have not, uh, I, I'm not sure, Wendy, if they have already settled for our CTA. Just Wendy there. But it, but what I'm, under, my understanding is that it's gonna be, if they've settled, I'm not sure if they are, but it will be presented to the board on April 22, I think. Right, it's yeah. April, it is April 22nd. And so at this point in time, I guess this discussion, if it gets into negotiations, we cannot start talking about it here. So um, we understand what uh, Priscilla said, and that's new information that we have received today when she was at the County Office of Ed. So what I need to do is meet with uh, Wendy, and then after we have the meeting, probably have a closed session with the board regarding negotiations. Since I don't have that as an item on this board agenda, I don't think I can cover it under COVID-19. No, that's fine. It's just that that was the first I'd heard of it. So I just think it's important that we have that conversation then, right? So thank you. 
Mm -hmm. um, that makes sense to follow the process you just said, John. Okay, perfect. And Priscilla, thank you for all you're doing. I really appreciate it. I know mm -hmm. um, I spoke to one of the county supervisors today, and he did talk about their expectation is we could see a 20 to 30 percent reduction in property values. Oh, um, now, of course, everybody's just guessing at this point. We don't really know. But again, I think, you know, we've got to start thinking longer term than just the next year or two. Uh, this is a huge impact to our expense line. Well, mm -hmm. our expense line and our revenue line, mm -hmm. right, of the budget. It's a whole new world just in the last couple of weeks. It's amazing. Yep. Any, any other questions or comments? Dennis? Yeah, I, this is Dennis. I had a follow-on question. Um, if property taxes were to drop dramatically, wouldn't we go out of basic aid and go back to LCFF? Mm -hmm. Yes, that's correct. So we will, we will be back to LCFF uh, funding. And so again, if that happens, we don't know it's going to be deficited or is it going to be still be fully funded? So we would know then hopefully uh, the, the uh, May revised budget is expected to be released around May 15. And so hopefully we'll know more about that. So locally also, we have to even look at our um, local revenues. We have lease, uh, leases, we have lease income, and we know that there is some requests already out there about rent relief, and that's something that Dr. Baker and I will be uh, working on in the next couple of days. Um, Priscilla, I've heard some people calling on the county to delay collection of property taxes. How would that impact us? Do you know? Um, that there is a, there is a letter that we got from the assistant controller, San Mateo County Controller's Office, but the delay is not deferral to the next fiscal year. It's like a delay by month only. So we're still anticipating that by the end, uh, before the close of the fiscal year, that we get 100% of our property taxes. So what we have uh, talked about this morning at the county meeting is that we will have another meeting to invite the county controller to join us and give us their forecast of what the uh, growth percentage will be in the succeeding year, if they can at least give us an estimate. And then another thing would be uh, their projection about, um, you know, the uh, Genentech appeal, will that be coming soon? And that would have an impact also on property tax distribution. Okay, mm -hmm. so last but not least is Andrea Guerin. Andrea, if you could give us just an update on the mental health pieces that we have out for our students at this point in time. Sure, can you hear me? Yep. Okay, great. So hi everyone, on mental health, we are working with still our, our partners, One Life Counseling and Star Vista primarily. Uh, we have a third partner, Acknowledge Alliance, that supports teachers at a couple of schools, but for the student support with One Life Counseling and um, Star Vista, those clinicians are actively calling the students that are in their caseloads and checking in. The model that they're working with right now is to try to do more frequent check-ins that aren't necessarily a full uh, appointment, let's call it, or session that they might conduct at school but they're trying to maintain connection, trying to assess needs, um, emotional support, and we are working to come up with some creative ideas, possibly creating a, an office hours where they may have a set time where students could call in and they would just be there available to talk similar to a group setting. And um, basically that's where we are. They're, we have a Google form. It can be utilized by anyone who wants to request counseling. And we've gotten a couple of submissions so far. It gets downloaded to a spreadsheet and then it goes out. I, I check it over, Patsy checks it over, and um, a couple of principals have access to it and a community school coordinator so that they can 
notify the agencies when support is requested. So that's primarily how the counseling piece is working right now. John, you're muted. Yeah, we also have that information on the um, on our website, so it's there too for parents, and it's also been in um, communicate that have gone home to parents with the link, so it's available there too. Yes, Janet. No, I was just saying you're muted. Oh, okay, okay. So last, that was Andrea, but we know Don is here, and Don has done a great job with construction and making. Uh, John. Sure. Yeah. Before before you move on, I I, I not sure. I think this is uh, who's responsible for lunches. Child Nutrition Services. So that's Anna and her team. Okay. So after Don, I have a question about that. Thank you. Okay, so Don, just a quick update. We know you kind of give us updates all the time, but if you want to give us just a quick one right now. Sure, so construction is moving forward, uh, as you saw tonight with the TAF bid. Uh, that will start uh, doing the uh, notice of uh, notice to proceed and getting all the, the paperwork in. Hoover's gym is moving forward. We uh, we're able to start on the parking lot, which helped because sometimes when you do things in just the summer period, you always are a little leery about that short period of time that you have to do construction work. So we started that a little early. Same thing with Henry Ford. We had a week to get all the kinder classrooms done, so we started those early. Um, so it, it is moving along when we can. We uh, definitely move things forward as we can. Okay, that's great. Thank you, Don. So, um, Don, Dennis, you had a you had a question. Yes, thank you. Um, so, I, I would like an update on the on the the food, like um, like what kind of breakfasts and lunches, um, how many breakfasts and lunches, and it, this can be general. But are, are lunches and breakfasts trending up? trending down, flat, and then what are the procedures for protection of employees? Thank you. So if I can get you that information, it's sent it to you because there is a Google Doc that has that information for me. And I'll okay. send it to you in that fashion. Yes, and then the whole um, they are wearing, I will, they, they are wearing masks and they are wearing gloves. Um, and then you wanted to know what was the third question? Uh, this is, well, I think you're going to answer with the Google Draw uh, Docs. It was, um, well, no, it was like, what, what's an example of the breakfast and lunch? Okay, I, I'll have to get that information for you. I don't, that one I don't have. But on Google Docs, it gives you a day-by-day -day count of the number of lunches, breakfasts that are served. Yes, um, and they added dinners at Roosevelt, too. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> Should we um, take our speakers cards now? Yes, that would be fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, so just as a reminder, we have um, three minutes per speaker and I'm gonna go ahead and put the link to the speakers cards in the chat one more time. Um, there have been some questions popping up, but we're not gonna answer the questions from the chat or the Q and A. You do need to fill out a speaker's card in order to be called on. Um, so I'm putting the link in um, and then after we call you, I think Kyle or Ellie will unmute you. So please wait until you see that you're unmuted before you start talking. So our first speaker is Pablo Lopez. Okay, you're unmuted, Pablo. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Hi, uh, thanks for the opportunity to speak on this meeting. Uh, first of all, I want to acknowledge all the work done for the school district to keep, I mean, the schools up and running, I mean, remotely. It's, it's a tremendous job and we appreciate it. Uh, but that being said, um, I, I heard that there's uh, some progress on special education, but I didn't hear anything about uh, preschool, special education for preschool. So we, we have been in conversations with uh, my daughter's teacher, Laura Atherton. And I mean, other than a couple of phone calls, there's nothing 
uh, set up for them. Um, like there's some uh, plans like to have to do like circle time, storytelling. Uh, but the, the, the biggest concern is we understand that uh, neurotypical kids represent the majority of the kids in the school district. But kids on the, with the special needs, I mean, they, they also experience regression when it comes to behaviors and all the progress that they have done during the, the school year. It, it's going to be lost. And it's been three weeks and we haven't heard anything from, from the school district formally. We got a letter dated uh, March 18 with plans on what will be done in regards of OT, speech, um, and um, in, it's just to follow the IEP, but we haven't heard on any due dates or specific plans. Can you uh, guys elaborate on that? I can. Patricia, would you like to uh, address that? Absolutely, and and thank you, thank you for okay. raising your questions. Um, actually, with the preschool, um, my understanding is that they have been communicating with the families, and like I explained before, this is fairly new. Particularly, the preschoolers they learn with hand over hand a type of instruction. So doing an online has to be carefully looked at. I understand, and I did talk about uh, specifically about Lauda and how her living room was becoming a classroom and she's one of our preschool teachers and i have a group of teachers going to the sites to retrieve materials and we we practice um you know uh, social distance and and we took all the precautions um to be safe and they should be starting this week with the um more of the uh, the group and you mentioned you mentioned storytelling you mentioned group work small group work um occupational therapists yesterday we mailed um several packets also to some of the families who have no access online or have not been connected and um speech and language therapists are also working closely with the families so I will make sure, I know I, I specifically, I'm working directly with the preschool team, but I do think that they have been communicating with the families what the plans are. I can check back tomorrow. I have a staff meeting tomorrow at 11 a.m. Um, thank you, but also we would like to hear like <laughs> due dates because I mean, great, great plans. We really appreciate it. I know everybody's super busy and trying to figure this out but we would like to, to hear some due dates. So. What do you mean with due dates? Um, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, like I'm... When, when we're gonna start like with this, uh, like let's say an hour a day or something. To do... Okay. Okay, so I will, after my meeting tomorrow at 11, you should receive, all the parents should have already, I have received a lot of information on the planning that they're doing weekly, but I will follow up with you directly. Would that be okay? Uh, yeah, but also if they, some of the information can be curated, because when, when we had this conversation with teachers, uh, some of the material that was suggested that requires some monthly fees. So I don't know about <laughs> what do you mean? Of, uh, We're not like, applica like applications. Yeah. Oh, we, oh, okay, we can talk later, but we're not requiring anybody to pay for anything. Okay, just double checking. <laughs> yes, thank you, thank you. And I will be following up with you directly. Thank you, appreciate it. Okay, our next speaker is um, Emily Yance. Janet, um, she actually, um, on her comments, said she didn't need to speak, but it was more a comment that she had, and I sent you that comment. Okay, I know. I think um, if, like I said, I wasn't taking questions from the chats and stuff, so if she wanted to, to make her comment, we can do that. Oh, she, hold on. She says, so sorry, I can call in, or is someone calling me? Did she get unmuted? I, Jen, I unmuted her, but uh, the system says that she has an older version of Zoom and it won't let her chat. So she is going to have to call in if she wishes to speak. Okay, then um, 
I'll let her know. But Ellie, do you want to, um, I guess, do you want to just read what she wrote since she can't? Sure. It says, I don't need to speak, but would love to hear about how many after school programs look for the district with distance learning. At my school, we want to support virtually with SEL activities and tutoring sessions, but have the issue where the students' school emails can't accept emails outside of the network. So we can invite them to a Google Classroom. Since we don't have a network email address, I'm wondering how we're able to navigate that. So Kyle, do you want to answer that? It's because I Yeah, I'm mo uh, moving screens around. So um, one of the issues with us and email addresses is that we, we are audited on the email addresses that we issue. So anybody that we issue an email address to, we have to have a way to validate that through the state. So anybody who has a, a an RCSD email address has it set up so that we can document who they are, either a board member or they're somebody who's an employee of the district. So we don't issue RCSD email addresses to non-staff because did anyone audit it on those addresses? I think we lost, was it just me? I lost audio from Kyle. No, I can hear. I can yeah. hear Kyle. Yeah. Okay, it's so, me. Yeah. Yeah. So we just we get audited on those addresses. And so those can be subpoenaed and, and they can, uh, the information in them um, can be uh, requested through a, a public records request. And so anybody who doesn't is, isn't a member of the district and hasn't signed the acceptable use policy, we don't issue addresses to. So, so then it would be best if we followed up with a phone call to this person so they would better understand if we could do that tomorrow, Kyle, I'd appreciate it if you would be able to do that. So we get back to her as to why this is happening. Kyle, you're on mute. Ms. Johns, if you wanna um, leave a message for me or send me an email via the district website, I'd be more than happy to follow up with you via um, phone tomorrow. Okay, so moving on. So our third speaker's card just says parent of a second grader. Um, and I know we also have somebody listed as parent that would like to speak. I don't know if this is the same person. So if you submitted a card as parent of a second grader, um, could you uh, either put it in the chat so we know who to unmute? Uh, in the meantime, I guess we'll move on to uh, Michelle Butler. Unmute. Sorry, can you hear me now? Yes. Um, yes. So I wanted to start, first of all, by thanking everyone. Like, um, I am not a techie person, and I am pretty impressed with all the technology I learned in a extremely crazy week. And that was a lot of thanks to Linda Montes and her, uh, the whole team that got the training support up and then also to my fellow colleagues. Um, I'm also feel extremely grateful that we have Patricia Podino leading our special ed department because wow, you know, I've been doing this 20 years and this is incredibly different and she has been an incredible leader and for our site admins for their support um and then it's it's i just want to acknowledge how hard this is um i heard the parent that's concerned about his child getting special ed services uh but everyone i know in special ed we have been working i don't know 10 hour days um trying everything in our power to get a hold of our parents. And it's much easier, um, sorry, three through eight, but not as easy for the kinder through second graders. And it's taken a lot of thinking outside the box to try and reach everyone. Um, and so I hope also I understand the uncertainty and the crisis, potential crisis to the economy, but I hope also um, as you contemplate 
whether teachers, you know, should deserve some sort of merit raise that you can contemplate how, um, I hope how dedicated we all are, how, how much I know our Hoover team is, um, and thank you for your support. Thank you, Michelle. Um, and then we, we do have a um, parent who would like to speak, and this is not the same as the card that read parent of a second grader. So again, if parent of a second grader would like to speak, please let us know who to unmute. Go ahead, parent. Hi. Hi, yes. Um, thank you so much. I actually had three quick questions. One was, can you send a list of everything that's from the classroom for logins, passwords, usernames, QR codes, and so forth, and send to the parents' emails. A lot of people would like to use the things that their kids use in the classroom, but they don't know what the kids' passwords, usernames, emails, and all the stuff the kids were using in the classroom. So although they know there are things to be used, they don't have a list all in one place of how to get their kid connected up to all the RAS kids and better immersion and all the other things. So that's the first part is could you send a list to the parents email of what that kids things are that they could have been using in the classroom and now could possibly use at home. The second one is that for the first grade classroom, the parents would prefer to use something called zoom, which is similar to Google. And it's a long complicated story why they want to use that but that's what they'd like to do. And so if they're willing to log in and sit next to their child while the child is using it, it seems like the parents should be able to do that, not needing to sign a consent form because they wouldn't be doing it unless they were logging in and using it. Then the next part was about out of district transfers. Since the district may go back from basic aid to LCFF funding, then out of district transfers, for example, being allowed to be um, someone from San Jose or Fremont or San Francisco to be recruited to go to the program for the Mandarin Immersion Program in particular, we'd like to request that that go back to the way it had been before under the LCFF because it will take a long time for all that to get untangled. And um, in the meanwhile, if we could continue to have out of district transfers the way we did in the past, that would really help our recruiting. So if anyone could answer any one of those three questions or have any ideas. So I can, I can answer, answer your first, first oh, two. sorry. This is Kyle, I can answer the first two. Um, so the first one in reference to digital resources, all of our digital resources and a lot of the, we, we can't provide usernames and passwords for everything, but most of the resources that our students use are all connected to their Clever account. So we use Clever as a tool to provide single sign-on for most of the applications the students use. So if they log into their Google account or they have for our second graders, they actually have a badge that we've provided to them that they can actually hold up to the camera that has their login information for them as well. Um, we that is actually don't process that we're working on right now that uh, Ms. Whip and our professional development office has been working on making sure all those resources are available for second grade families? Um, we're first grade and none of us, uh, or I think maybe two people in the whole class have any Google stuff at all and the rest of us don't have anything. Okay. So, um, so. and we'd really love to, to get all that information. If you could send it to us in an email, because the children in the classroom are doing things, but then when they get home, we don't know what they've done, what names they've given themselves, what passwords they've given themselves, and so forth. Yeah, so, so we use Clever to manage all of that, so they don't have multiple usernames and passwords. That's one of the, the reasons we use Clever, is that everything goes through that. Um, Does that have Prodigy? Excuse me? Does that have Prodigy and Raz Kids and Better Immersion on it? Um, I don't believe it. I don't know if it has product prodigy. I know Raz Kids is something that is managed by the teachers themselves. So each teacher has their own account and there is an actual um, uh, code that they provide for students to log into that service. 
So you would have to contact the individual teacher for the RAS kids access. Mm -hmm. Okay. But the basics are almost all in Clever. And so we can work with the teacher to provide individual um, families with usernames and passwords to use Clever. Okay. We sent Clever badges to all the TK uh, families. Yeah. First grade? Does first TK grade to have second. Them? Does first grade have them? Yes. Okay, because I don't have it, so. Okay. Um, so, and then question two about, about Zoom. The biggest issue with Zoom is that we can't support it and we can't, we have no vision on it whatsoever. And so, so, it, it's so a, if parents would like to use it and just waive having tech support, would that be fine? Because no, they'd like to use it without having tech support, You're not needing it, just using it as it is. Um, it, it creates some inequities there. We have a platform that works. Um, well, we've been having a lot of problems trying to use it, and we have less problems when we use Zoom. So, and there's a guy who actually works for Google and has told us that he would rather use Zoom. So, so right now, right now, Google Meet is the, is the application that we're using. It's what we have. Um, the we mentioned earlier the reasons that we have it is because parents have already signed off on it. Um, it is difficult for us to support multiple um, applications. I know you've stated that you can support it on your own, but at some point, somebody may have an issue, and if we can't support that one person, we create a, an inequity for that family. Well, we're having trouble using it in any, I mean, it's, it's just so, kind of not very usable now, so. Okay, so, um, I mean, if you'd like to, to reach, I mean, we can, continue this offline, but if you'd like to um, reach out to me, I can work with you in using um, Google Meet and ironing out some of the issues that you might have. We use Google Meet pretty extensively for our um, cabinet and our principals meetings and have been very successful using it with upwards of 40 people. Why are we using uh, Zoom now then if Google is so great? Uh, we're using Zoom for this is that we can control the audience and we can have an audience larger than what Google Meet can handle. So we had to have this board meeting scheduled in such a way that we could have a capacity of larger than 100. So with that said, it's actually, we need to move on um, from the public. Okay, so the last, the last question, if anybody could answer the part about out of district transfers for the LCSF versus the basic aid funding. Okay, so I can uh, provide a little bit of information about that. So right now, uh, for us to be able to answer you, we need to know what is the county controller's projection of decline in property taxes. Right now, if we're looking at what we're getting in property taxes compared to the excess taxes that we're getting, we will have to decline uh, property tax revenues would have to decline by about six eight percent for us to switch back to lcfs so we don't know the answer to that yet until we hear more from the county controller's office thank you okay so we're going to move on and um that was our last speaker's card so we're going to go back to having all of the attendees being muted um so i guess board do you have any other questions or comments before we move on None, okay. Uh, we have no items on consent. Moving on to item 10.1, action item. Uh, this is the resolution of emergency relating to COVID-19. So this is a resolution that I think, um, Elisa brought it to my attention. I think it was Santa Clara, was it Santa Clara? Am I correct? That Santa Clara- yeah. put in Santa Clara started it and then we got it revised, yeah. And, and I believe um, Claire Cunningham revised it for um, all the school districts in the county who would like to use it. What this does is it enables me to make some decisions and of course always letting you know what, what, what's occurring but without more so having a, a formal you know, um, board meeting but you each would know exactly what is taking place. And it's not on a, a, a litany of items, the items are listed in the resolution. Are there any questions about that? Yeah. 
No. Okay. Okay, then we'd need um, a motion to approve it. So moved. This well, is Maria. 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 Dennis second. second it. Oh. Dennis was the second. Um, roll call, please, Ellie. Kristen McBride. Aye. Kristen Walters. Aye. Jesse Diaz Locum. Aye. Mm -hmm. McAvoy. Aye. Kristen Wilson. Aye. Thank you, and I'll um, go ahead with the resolution. Um, let's see, we are on 11.1 .1, report from board members and superintendent. Does anybody have anything they would like to? Dennis? I'm sorry, Dennis, yeah. to interrupt. I'm so sorry. Um, we have Robin that just submitted a speaker's card and she um, typed up something on, on the chat room. I don't know if you would like to address that. Um, I mean, was the card in already? It was after we had already um, taken action on 10.1. Okay, so I think we're gonna have to move on and Robin, you can email the board. Dennis, sorry, did you? Yeah, I had two things before. This is what I wanted to show you. <laughs> Team Baker, hold it up higher. Team Baker what? Rocks. Team Baker rocks. rocks. That's right. So that was on my wall. So I had two it does. things. It does. Um, the first was I, I've been working <laughs> for a Senator Jerry Hill trying to get our federal monitoring um, stopped, you know, the audit with the state. And has that happened, Linda? Uh, no, we were on a meeting today, and I think they've extended the deadline we heard, so it's through the end of April. And if we have any findings, we have, you know, uh, any as long as we want to, we, not as long as we want. <laughs> we have a long time to address them, but no. But thank you so much. And, and they were very, um, uh, on the call today, we met with all the team members, including some of our directors who were on it. Um, um, understanding of where we are this time, but what we're moving forward. <laughs> All right, so I, I had called um, today and I'll, I'll call Jerry again tomorrow and see if we can do a little better. Um, the second thing is um, there's a woman that wants to, her company wants to donate computers um, to the district and she also um, has um, office supplies like notebooks, markers. So Kyle uh, has been working with me on that. And um, so she's pretty excited and Kyle thinks he can use the computers. So that's all I had. Great. So I can go. I um, had a CSBA board meeting on Saturday. Normally we would have met Saturday and Sunday up in Sacramento, but we did a Zoom call uh, with all the board members and you know, CSBA, I'm sure you've seen a lot of the resources that are coming out from them, and they will be doing a lot of advocacy around funding. So Priscilla, kind of going back to what some of you, ta you talked about earlier, uh, they will be doing advocacy. They will be sending out surveys to us. So if you see those, please fill them out because it'll give them additional information in terms of what our needs are. And I'll try to um, make sure I fill those out and I'll work with Priscilla and John as needed uh, to make sure that um, you know, our voice is heard up there in Sacramento. And um, I just wanted to say that I'm so impressed with what we're doing here in our school district and in San Mateo County, relative to the rest of the state. You know, as you know, the CSBA board has uh, regional directors from all over the state. And we are definitely ahead of a lot of other school districts. Some of the other school mm -hmm. districts were just taking off the last several weeks um, on a break. There was no learning going on. And as we talked about before, I think with all the technology we've had in our staff development team, we were well prepared to be able to launch everything that we've done. So I know that for some parents and, you know, certainly for our teachers and staff, this has been really hard and it's not where we want it to be. Um, but I think we just need to really give ourselves a pat on the back and just say, hey, we have done a really good job and um, we will continue to, you know, move forward and do all of that. So. Um, let's see that. And then, of course, um, I, I think many of us, we've been sitting in on the county. This is more for the benefit of the audience. 
the and staff, the county um, manager and many of the key staff who are in our emergency response group for the San Mateo County, they have uh, three, well, they had daily conference calls for a while, and now it's Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. They're an hour long. It's for all elected officials in the county to join. Uh, many school board members and city council members are joining those. Lots of information coming out. So we've been able to advocate for uh, education through that process and just learn what's going on. And I'm, again, I'm very impressed with how well government officials, uh, nonprofits, businesses are trying to rally to support uh, individuals and small businesses and families in our community. So I'm sure there'll be more continuing on that. And then um, we're also doing biweekly uh, calls with the San Mateo County School Boards Association and school board members are able to be on that. And I know that many of us have been on these as well. And so I think there'll just be a lot for us to continue to work on as we move from phase one to phase two, and then of course, eventually back into the classroom. So a lot of the conversations we had tonight are also going on in other school districts, but I really feel like we are well positioned and, um, you know, doing doing well considering everything that's going on. So I just wanted to thank um, all the staff again. I know you tell hard. I mean, everybody from superintendent to principals to district staff, teachers, custodians, just every you know, custodians, cafeteria workers, office managers, classified. Everybody's been working so so hard. So uh, thank you so much. I um, really appreciate everything. Maria or Cecilia, would you do you have any? reports or anything to share? Um, I've just been helping parents with different questions that they have and directing them to the district office. I also want to remind everybody to fill out their census forms. Everyone must be counted and um, that's about all I have. I don't have anything. So my connection is bad right now. I'm sorry, I'm not hearing anybody. So if, was Cecilia, I, did I interrupt Maria? Does Cecilia want to share? She said she didn't have anything. There we go, I'm back. Okay. I didn't have anything. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll just say I was, I've been on, um, I think every single one of those county calls and this uh, CSBA calls, the San Mateo School Boards Association. Um, and I'm really grateful for just um, how uh, collaborative our entire county is. Um, I think it's just been amazing to see um, just all the information sharing and the, you know, making connections with, you know, who has what and who needs what. Um, I really appreciate being included on those. Um, and I think other than that, um, the only other report I have is that Elisa and Linda and I have been doing some policy work via email. Oh. Uh, I think those are coming at our next meeting, I believe, um, to review. And then John, I, I want to say thank you for sharing your notes from, you know, your um, cabinet and principals meetings. It's been really, really helpful to see everything that's going on. and. Um, it's exhausting just reading it and knowing how much everybody's putting in. And Eliana, thanks for taking those notes too. I appreciate that. They've been very thorough. Yeah, Eliana's doing a great job. She's, she doesn't have them ready yet to send out this week because we got to do, we had to do that emergency board meeting <laughs> this morning and she was up late last night trying to get it all together with Kyle. So, um, she's done an outstanding job with those minutes, uh, with everybody really capturing what everyone uh, says at the meetings. So um, it's been really good to have those. So th those will continue to go out every time we have the meetings. Thank you. Great. Did you have anything else to report on, John? Oh, no, just the superintendent's meetings, and they drive me nuts. <laughs> 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 but it is what it is. Linda walked me off a cliff this afternoon. <laughs> she, we were talking right after I got off that meeting, and I was about ready to just ah, scream, but um, it's fine. Uh, Nancy is going to, I think she already did, send out another press, a press release. Um, I don't know why. You read it and you tell me what you think of it. Um, it's, it's really interesting. It's really, we're, there were 23 people and um, we all hear the same thing. And then it seems that some of us walk away and do something and others walk away and do something else. It's, I don't know. I don't know. 
So you get very frustrated. I got very frustrated. And thank mm. you, Linda, for walking me off the cliff. It's just like, ah. Oh. So, but let me tell you, our, our neighboring school districts, we are together <laughs> in what we're doing. It's just like the others. I don't know what they were thinking, but, but there's a new re press release that she just put out and it doesn't say much. So I don't, I don't know. I'll let you read it. You let when me. When did that come out? Was it this evening? Yeah. Okay. It just went out just a, about maybe about 45 minutes ago, oh, okay. 45 minutes to an hour ago. But other than that, no, I'm just thankful for the staff, for the cabinet. Oh my God, the work that has gone into making this happen. So my um, uh, hefty recommendation was to all cabinet members and principals and all staff, unplug next week just unplug. Uh, if there's an emergency, I said I would text them that I need them, but we all are going to unplug because when we come back, we have to start the next phase. And that next phase is going to be a bit, uh, some of the same, but a lot, but some different too. So I've asked them all to just unplug for the whole week. I know we are supposed to, we need to stay home, walk around the block, whatever, but um, I asked them all to unplug. Yeah. It's spring break. Visit a different part of your house and hang out in that room and don't do any work, please. That's right. That's right. Thank you. Okay. We have no information items, um, correspondence to share. Uh, just, just emails, emails from the getting... parents. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, then. Uh, other business suggested items for future agenda. Anybody have anything else? Yeah, I just thought it was helpful to have an opportunity to talk about COVID-19. So if that could be a standing item on the agenda, I think that would be helpful just to get an update. You know, as we move into it, probably doesn't have to be as long an update. I, I really appreciated the detail tonight. So thank you so much. Um, but I just think it's good to have it on the agenda. So if we do need to talk about it, we can. Okay. Okay. And the next meeting is the April 22nd, but there may be uh, another meeting on the 29th. It all depends on things fall and what we, what needs to come about because there's some items that um, um, I will call individual board members before Friday, just to talk to you about uh, an item that Priscilla brought to my attention. So uh, I think I'll do two at a time and then one. And um, so just that you all have that information. And then there will most likely be a closed session on the 22nd, from my understanding, mm -hmm. from talking to council. So just that you're mm -hmm. aware of that, but that's a ways away, but um, closed session on the 22nd and then I will uh, get out to you um, between now and Friday sometimes so that you can sign up by twos if you could. And then maybe Janet, you and I would meet alone since you're the president. And, but the others by twos, just as you have an understanding of um, what I would like to talk to you about along with Priscilla would be with me on the call, okay? And then we're still having a special board meeting, I think for the bond, is that right, on the 15th? Uh, is, is that on there for the 15th? I didn't know. I have it on my calendar. Uh, You're muted. I can't hear you. Ellie, is that on there? Dennis, you're muted. Um, I thought we moved it to the 26th at 6 p.m. Okay. So you're saying that the 22nd the 26th is a Sunday? No, the 22nd. 22nd is a Wednesday. So that is the next at the next board meeting. So it starts at six. So if we have a closed session, this closed session will start at five. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. So can you can you repeat that just so I make sure I get that on my calendar? What are we doing? So it seems like on April 22nd there will be a closed session, and that closed session would most likely either at five or five thirty, dependent dependent on what the item is from council. Okay, but I'll find out prior to that. So I would say put five for right now, put five that will start closed session. And then uh, an update on the bond construction at six. And then we start a regular board, regular board meeting at seven. Okay. 
so so nothing on the 15th then april so just this would be on the 22nd correct correct because we had spring okay there. and then maybe the 29th correct you'll let us know about that okay possibility yes i'm around <laughs> <laughs> i'm not going anywhere shelter in place yep 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 and then changes to the agenda the board agenda schedule no okay then that's it i think um i was watching the uh, participants list and i think that we would have actually filled the boardroom um with the number of people that we've had participating in this meeting so i think it's awesome that we've had so much interest in that people are are here so thank you for all of those who um spent the last couple of hours with us we appreciate it yeah thank you to the public that's great um is there a motion to adjourn? So so moved. Moved. <laughs> I think that was everybody. <laughs> In unison. <laughs> okay. I, I heard a first and a second from my uh, all four. So uh, <laughs> we will see you on the 22nd. Right. And, and don't forget that I will be calling, uh, not calling, but sending you a, 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 like a Google Doc to go ahead and fill in. Or I'll give you some times on a regular email and just let me know which, which is best. And for Cabinet, okay. um, after this meeting, I will put together uh, the Google Hangout for tomorrow at 9. So we can start our, our meeting at 9 and I'll put the agenda on there too. So I'll do that right after this meeting. John, don't we have a bond meeting at 9 tomorrow? Yeah. I think I will skip the bond meeting tomorrow because of what I need to do. Can Priscilla skip it and Dennis and, and Janet give us the, the info? Sure. Because I really need Priscilla in this cabinet meeting for tomorrow. It's, it's, we're getting ready to start the, what should we call it, phase three or phase two? <laughs> what was it, Linda, phase two or phase three? I can't remember anymore. That's fine. We'll be at the, we'll be at the bond meeting.